I'm Ashley Webster in London. Fact is usually stranger than fiction. It's a lesson Hollywood is learning with a little help from the real life uh, heartache of five U.S. teenagers. We'll meet the kids the studio executives are banking on in today's box office preview. All right, there are five Indiana teenagers who have turned the tables on the Hollywood system. Studios are now paying them for their real life drama lessons. We'll talk with a man who supported this venture that's coming up next on Money for Breakfast. Welcome back. Teenagers have an estimated purchasing power of $129 billion and now Viacom's Paramount and its Vantage Film Division are hoping they'll spend some of that money on tickets for a new documentary, American Teen. The reality film follows the daily dramas of five high school kids from Indiana. Patrick Morris is a partner with Hagen Investment Management. He's also president of 57th and Irving Productions. That's a private equity fund that invests in movies, including American Teen. Patrick, good morning. Good morning. So why did you invest in American Teen? Well, it was an interesting process. Um, the movie was introduced to us by an agency, which a lot of movies are. Um, but what really hooked us was that the director, Nanette Burstein, first of all, is from Buffalo. And I'm from Buffalo, my <laughs> brother's from Buffalo, my parents are from Buffalo, so say Buffalo and you've got me. Um, and the uh, second thing that drew us to the movie is, of course, Nanette Burstein, the director, is a phenomenally talented director. Uh, she was Oscar nominated for On the Ropes, and she also did a uh, movie called The Kid Stays in the Picture, both of which are excellent. So okay, but On the Ropes really didn't do that well in the box office. From a financial point of view, what's the investment angle? The investment angle is that reality TV has been extraordinarily popular over the last few years. So when I was told that this project was spending a year in the life with American teenagers, the worldwide obsession with what American teens are up to, plus the obsession with reality TV, I think made it a pretty easy investment. And your firm also has an obsession with documentaries. Why documentaries? <laughs> Uh, well, documentaries have uh, relatively low budgets, um, and I think if you pick a good documentary, you can do extremely well on it. Uh, again, this comes down to what choices you make uh, when it comes to the movies that you're going to make. But I think with American Teen, we did very well, and we have a movie about Yusu and Dora coming, which I hope is going to be uh, a, a real good movie, too. You know, i got to tell you, in 1998, a guy came to me, Malcolm Lee. He said he's Spike Lee's cousin. He wanted me to invest in a movie. And I said, well, you know, you're Spike Lee's cousin. You know, why can't you get the money from him? I did not do it. It was the best man who made almost $35 million. I would have made millions, and I would have been part of the hip crowd. How does an investor know when to invest in a movie? Uh, well, an investor has to use their best judgment, like they would in any investment. You have to go with people you trust. You have to go with projects that you like. I don't think you should ever do anything, be it movies, collecting cars, wine, stamps, whatever. If you don't enjoy it, if you're not going to enjoy the process, it's probably not going to go very well. I think you should have invested in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in hindsight, <laughs> I wish I did, just to be with the hip crowd. Okay, listen, we know that the, we talk every day here in this network about the financials and what's going on with the banks. Uh, is that having an impact on the movie industry, particularly when it comes to financing? Yeah, this is an interesting question, and this is something that comes up a lot these days. I think that the impact is actually with companies like mine and smaller independent films. Obviously, we saw a deal fall apart a few weeks ago, and that was based on the cost of capital. Well, for a lot of smaller companies it's just not available at all it's not the cost of capital it's the availability so when you make a film and you're spending a lot of cash to make a film and you go to a festival and you're looking for a distributor there just aren't that many of them out there anymore that can pay big numbers for your film so you have to be very careful right now control your budgets I think that's the the biggest impact right now. and I think there's also some sort of a way to get some help from state uh, tax loopholes or, or tax credits could you explain that well, I don't like the word loophole. <laughs> okay, tax credits. <laughs> tax credits, okay. exactly. Uh, the state tax credits are actually extraordinarily helpful. In the case of New York, they just moved. If you do a movie in New York City, uh, which is obviously in New York State, you can get up to 35%. Uh, credit on that film. So that's extraordinarily helpful. The IRS also was very kind in passing Section 181, which allows you to take 100% depreciation on your investment in the first year for a film under $15 million. So your actual dollars at risk from, your, from the investment point of view is substantially lower if you're getting, say, 35% off on the dollars invested from the federal government and 35% more off from the state of New York. That uh, can be extraordinarily helpful. Right. You know, Patrick, uh, you know, we're, we're in a real difficult economic time. We have the housing crisis, and, but we also have this phenomenon that they call staycation when people aren't traveling a lot. And maybe it's having a positive impact on the film industry. Mm -hmm. We've had some big blockbusters. Is it somehow that the, the real malaise in the economy, is that actually a boon for the film industry right now? 
Uh, I think it has to be the case. Uh, looking at the price of the euro against the dollar, one has to say it's probably pretty tough for most people to get to Europe. It's probably pretty tough for most people to drive anywhere. Uh, I would say that staying home and watching a movie is probably a, a pretty low cost bit of entertainment. It's a place you can take the kids and uh, the air conditioning is free. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> thank you very much and success and congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Well, coming up later on Money for Breakfast, Olympic hopefuls may have one more hurdle to clear before they